Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're with us today. Uh, we are continuing our vision focus plan as uh, we go through each week. Uh, this week we're going to be listening uh, to God, uh, talking about prayer and our response to Him, and also listening to Him as uh, He shares with us uh, His vision and His focus for our lives. Uh, at this time, let us rise and greet those around us.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Ephesians 1 it says, I do not cease to give thanks to you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and a revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the works of his great might? This is the day that the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me known your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. We pray the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He is sent into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He is sent into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment to reflect on our personal sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called, ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
got a couple quick announcements. Uh, first off, uh, the Ring the Bell uh, Vision Focus Plan is underway. Uh, if you missed the last week, uh, we handed out some packets uh, that have all the information of kind of what's going on, uh, what we're looking at doing. Uh, if you did not get one of those, uh, or somebody in your family did not grab one, there are more in the back. Please pick one up as you go out uh, today. We'd love for you to have that. Um, it's important that you know what's going on. I've said this a couple times. I'll say it again. We do not want somebody to come to us and say, Pastor, I have no idea what you're talking about. So we want to make sure everybody's a part of this. And so make sure you get a part of it, get uh, a piece. Uh, we also have uh, four vision focus uh, gatherings. Uh, these will be times uh, throughout the week. Uh, the first one is today right after late service, and then there's some throughout the, uh, the week uh, that can be, the dates can be found in your packet uh, or inside your bulletin. Uh, we want you to be there, uh, to come and to listen, and you get an idea of kind of what's going on. You can ask your questions, uh, and it's important that we're all in this together. Uh, lastly, uh, the LWM Dorcas Circle ladies are collecting health care kits. Uh, for Lutheran World Relief. Uh, please see your inserts in your bulletin uh, for more information. I believe that's it at this time. Let us rise and go to God in prayer. But truly, God has listened. Blessed be God. Because he has not rejected my prayer. Or removed his steadfast love from me. Heavenly Father, we do know that you listen to your children. And as we come before you, lifting up our thanks and our praise, uh, we thank you so much for this wonderful congregation, for all the years that it has served this community. Lord, we ask that you guide us, that you help us to listen to you uh, for your vision for us and for this community. Lord, we ask uh, that you help us uh, to build a diverse community of Christian followers. We ask uh, that you bless uh, this vision focus plan uh, time, that you guide us in our next steps. Lord, we lift up uh, the North Edge as it is a place for us to come together as a place for us to build a community, to build relationships. Lord, we ask uh, that you bless uh, those endeavors. Lord, we also lift up the church offices. We ask uh, that you uh, help it to be a place uh, where it is front and center, where it can be, uh, where all can find it easily. Lord, we ask uh, that all the ministries that are blessed through it uh, may prosper. Lord, we lift up our early 
childhood sinner. We ask uh, that you watch over the plans of the new building. We ask that you start to bless all those children that will be in it. And we ask that uh, you guide us in this process. Lord, in the gatherings that we will be meeting, we ask uh, that you watch over them, that you soften our hearts to you as we look to raise money to fulfill your mission for this community. And Lord, we want to lift up a uh, shepherd in Franklin, Texas, and Christ in Breckenridge, Colorado. Help them to share the love of your son's death and resurrection to their community. Lord, we give you thanks uh, for Gina's good health. We give you thanks uh, for uh, Curtis and Rhonda for 34 years of marriage. We give you thanks uh, for all those that are celebrating birthdays. For Annie, for Dave, for Alan, for Mike, for John, for Pastor Tyner, Joyce, Helen, and Gladys. We ask that you bless them and you strengthen them in their faith towards you. Uh, Lord, uh, we thank you for the birth of Jack. Uh, may you, his life uh, be prosperous and go uh, to knowledge of you. We also um, lift up the families of those uh, that have lost loved ones. We want to lift up the family of Ruth Daring and Dennis Foster. Be with those families as they mourn. We ask that you give them the hope and the knowledge of your love that has covered them and brought them into your kingdom. Heavenly Father, there are those among us that are sick and struggling. We lift up especially Nancy, Debbie, Heather, Daniel, John, Laverne, Kenneth, Jim, and all on our hearts and minds that we lift up now. Lord, we do know that you hear our prayers and that you do answer them. We ask that you help us to listen and to be able to follow you. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, Amen. You may be seated. The epistle reading this morning comes from Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of the faith of Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you have heard before the word of the truth, the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise as we are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the 26th chapter. And when Jesus went with them to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began uh, to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell down on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, 
So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink of it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep, and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated, and at this time we invite our children forward for a children's message. Come on up. Ooh, light this morning, huh? There we go. Oh, no. <clears throat> Dad's bringing Ella up. Good. Where did all the kids go this morning? Nobody else, huh? Oh, here we go. Okay. Morning. Up scooch over here. All right. Well, thanks, moms and dads, for coming up too. <laughs> are you are you thankful they came up with them today? It could just be you and me otherwise. That'd be okay. Well, today you you heard as Pastor Chris did that reading, uh, he was praying, right? Uh, and one of the things that we noticed, he, he prayed to God that maybe God would take something away or make something stop. But we know that, that what had to happen to Jesus still happened. Let me ask you something. Sometimes do, does, mom or, do, does mom say no sometimes to things that you ask for? Does she ever tell you? Yeah. <laughs> Always says no. Oh, you have such a rough life, I can tell. Um, is sometimes is it good that she says no though? Like, let me. See, what's your favorite food? Pizza. Would you like to have pizza all the time, lunch and dinner? No. What would you like to have all the time? If you could have it all the time to eat, what would you eat? McDonald's. Okay, that's good. <laughs> we got some op options. But does she probably say no to that? Yes. yes I know she's so awful. Right? For saying no to that. Oh, you wanted the new toy. Well, that's important too. But you know what? It wouldn't be very healthy for us if we had McDonald's all the time, right? So it's good that she says no sometimes. And today in the prayer, that's part of what God was saying. We saw too is God the Father said no to what Jesus was saying. And Jesus <laughs> said, you know what? It's okay if you say no because I want to do what you want to do, God the Father, instead of just what I want to do. And that's an important thing to think about for us when we pray, that sometimes God says no to our prayers when we ask, and sometimes he says yes. And so, and, and the whole point is, we want to follow what God wants us to do rather than what, what we want to do. And prayer helps us figure that out, okay? So, you agree, he agrees. He commented. Okay, so we're going to pray today that as, okay, yeah, good. He's helping us out. Good, he's got some answers. All right, so let's pray, and we're going to pray that God helps us understand what he desires for us to do, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Help us to always follow you. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you all for helping us get started. You can head back to your seats. See you
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, last week, as Pastor Chris mentioned, we had the kickoff for the, the vision focus plan. And again, that's our project to see uh, what we get to do for the building plan. We have all these areas that we're hoping to be able to build, and we've had that concept approved by the congregation. So now we're in that spot where we get to see what kind of resources we have, right? Um, first and foremost, because it ties into the name uh, of, of the campaign, Ring the Bell, is the bell tower. We hope to get that bell tower rebuilt and redone so it doesn't leak anymore. So we can use the bell again so that uh, the beautiful stained glass can be lit up. We're, we're looking at a, 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 the new narthex, the expanded area where we hope to be able to build relationships and have people gather. The, an, an amazing new ECC will have no equal in, in all of Lee County, I think. Um, Centralizing the offices, as Pastor Chris mentioned, is a place kind of central to everything. Uh, and, and last week, as, as we think about all those different parts of the project, as you think about all that, and, and the covered drive too, by the way, still part of it. Uh, as you think about all those parts, we, we, we talked about how it's a great team of folks that has to make great things happen. And so kickoff Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, uh, we talked or mentioned that uh, the football team, Right? You have a, a team that will play, and the players get a lot of, a lot of recognition. The MVP, the one person that kind of gets singled out usually. Uh, but that it's so much more than that to make a, a successful season, a, a Super Bowl victory. You've got coaches and trainers and owners, the general manager, so many people that come together to, to make the Super Bowl victory happen. Or I, I brought up the example from the moon landing. Neil Armstrong is the one that, that is brought to mind, but there was a wonderful quote from him at, at the interview. Uh, where he thanked the, literally hundreds of thousands of people that it takes, that it took to make the moon landing possible. So there's so much more that goes into making those big things happen. And, and we ended last week then uh, with the kids handing something out to you. What did you get handed out to you? Puzzle, Puzzle piece. Good. Okay, and, and we asked a question tied to that. Um, where do I fit in? We have this grand project and we, that we praise God's vision. We understand to be God's vision for us in this place. Where do I fit in? Where, just like on the football team, would I fit in? Where in that uh, moon landing, where do I fit in? Where for this vision focus campaign, Ring the Bell, where do, where do I, where do you fit into all this? And, and, and so you had that puzzle piece to see that to make that picture whole, you, you, you got to get there. On the back, something was written. One word. <coughs> Right, good. Okay, we got that, right? We're, as we understand God's vision, as we understand and we ask this question, where do I fit in? We've got to ask of God, where do you see me fitting in? Where do I fit into this vision focus plan? And so just as there's a whole host of folks, again, we see where you're looking at. And we understand and we believe and we are confident that God will use each of us for this vision focus plan, okay? Okay. Uh, that God uses all of us as his vision moves forward. And, and a reminder, as much as we're focused on the building portion of that vision right now, the building is not the end all. The building is not, our, the building itself in this vision focus campaign right now is not the whole vision. The vision goes far beyond the building. Remember, so I, just as I said, there's all sorts of parts to make a team. You got the players, the coaches, the trainers, the owners, all that. For God's vision, it is not simply the vision is not to have a great building and to have a new bell tower and the ECC. That's not the vision. It's part of it. And it is a continuing part of the process that we will have. And so rather than being the end all, it's one of the beginning parts. So, so I want to go back then for a second. If, if the building's not the vision, sorry, I'm, I'm scratchy today. If the building's not the vision, what is? Fellowship. Fellowship. What is our end goal? If, if, if the goal, end goal is not the building, but it's to do something else, we've actually articulated this in a couple different times and ways. What is it that we believe God's full vision for us is to, I'll help you out, to do something to Lee County? Spread the good news. Spread the good news. There was one word we talked about. It begins with the letter T. Oh. Thank you. I was thinking I was worried they hadn't done our work very good here. We've got to do a lot more. Transform Lee County. 
right? That we believe that God is, God is at work to transform this place to create a whole host of courageous Jesus followers, a diverse community of courageous Jesus followers. And that Emmanuel's role is to help facilitate that as God has changed us. As you have heard the gospel, as you have been rescued from death, as you have heard the good news, as you know Jesus loves you because of all that he has done, there is a world, there is, well, yes, there is a world, we're not, we're not after the world at this point. Who, who are we after? We're after the folks in our community. And we want to transform this place. That is the ultimate vision that God has put on us, to transform this Lee County area simply by loving people. Simply by sharing his good news. And the building project is part of that process. Because while well, the bell tower will call people to worship, it will stand us out as it's lit up. The narthex relationships will be built. Not just with those outside, but with each other. As we love and care and this community builds and gets stronger, it becomes a place people want to be part of. The early childhood center is people seek children being cared for. And so in all of that, we want you, we encourage you to, well, to do very something simple, to pray. God, how will you use me for that vision? I do want you to be thinking about the building and those initial parts, but how do you fit in overall? Because that is a daunting thing to think about, to transform Lee County, and that seems huge. God, you want us to go from here and do all this and we want to see it change. But the good news is it's really not up to us to do the changing. It is up to us to point to people the way and to the one who does the changing himself. And, well, that is to Jesus. It is Jesus who brings himself. It is Jesus who died. It is Jesus who baptizes. It is Jesus who gives us his body and blood. It is Jesus who sends us out at the very end of Matthew. He gives us the directions of how to change, how to transform people, how to make disciples. Right? End of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20. Jesus said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching. That is our purpose. <coughs> this is the part of the puzzle that you're trying to fit into. And here it is then to, un to first understand God's vision and God's plan. And now to get to the part that we really want to dig into more today is to pray. <clears throat> I'm not going to give you, ask you to give me a show of hands. I don't, I'm, although I am curious, admittedly, about who took that home and who did pray. And and I suspect a fair number of you didn't, and that's okay. Because I think a lot of times when we start thinking about stuff and say, okay, well, that sounds nice, but then when the moment hits and you start to go, well, there's a whole host of questions, I think, that start to come up. We've been taught forever, I think, in our church, in our Lutheran circles, that, well, it's the pastor who's supposed to pray. It's the pastor who does this or that. And, and well, we start thinking of so many other questions. What are some questions that come up with when you start to pray? Am I supposed to pray with my eyes closed or open? Should I fold my hands? Should I hold my hands out? I think we might get run out of town if we held our hands up probably to pray, but the Bible talks about it that way, of holding your hands up in prayer. There's all sorts of questions we start to have about the right way to pray. And we start to freeze. We don't have enough information, so I don't know what to do. Well, I'm just going to forget it. Or for that matter, we might start getting to a question of what is prayer at all? Anybody want to venture a guess? Well, how, would you, how would you describe prayer? How would you define it to somebody? Talking to God. Oh, good. Eight o'clock is good for you all of a sudden. I got some good, strong responses, so I wasn't ready for that. Kind of surprised me. Yeah, it's a conversation with God. That's all it is. It's a conversation with God and we can use our... And that's another question. Do I pray out loud? Do I just pray silently in my head? Yes. It's the answer. It's a conversation with God. Do I have to write the prayer down or, can it, or does it have to be something that I just say off the top of my head? Question after question after question. So many questions about 
just that simple conversation with God and we freeze because we feel like we don't have the answer. Does that happen to anybody? Do you freeze when you just don't know quite what to do? Or am I the only one that's ever happened to? All right, thank you for raising your hands. Good. Well, let me give you the simple answer to all those questions, so whether it's got to be written or whether you've got to have your eyes closed, hands up, whatever. There's all those questions. Let me give you the, the one answer. Yes. You can do any of them. There is no particular right way to pray. Uh, the only one I'll suggest is when you're driving, don't do the eyes closed. <laughs> Please keep your eyes open for the prayers. Okay? How many pray when they drive? All sorts of us, Right? Praying is that conversation with God any time, any place, and there's not any particular specific that I want you to be worried about, with one exception. One thing is needed. One thing I want to encourage you, and it's something you already do. It's such an expected thing. It's, it's really unspoken. It doesn't need to be spoken. But it is that you pray to the one but you pray to Jesus. And, and maybe that's assumed for you, and that's okay, but I want to say that's the only thing that we're worried about, that we pray specifically to Jesus. He is the one. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, we may say we pray to the Father, but, but ultimately we're praying through Jesus, and you're going to see in the one reading today we talk about praying through the Spirit. But it doesn't matter, eyes closed, open, hands folded, hands raised, written, or, or off the top of my head. Whatever it may be, the prayer is the same, and it's not what you do that makes the prayer effective, but I want you to see that it is the one you pray to that makes your prayer effective. Jesus is the one that speaks to God on our behalf. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus is our go-between. You saw in the reading today that even as Jesus prepared to go to the cross, he said, not my will, Father, but your will be done, and Jesus goes and speaks on your behalf. So whatever it is your prayer is, Jesus is the one that takes care of those things. Jesus is the one who hears our prayers. Jesus is the one that we go to over and over. It is Jesus. Paul spoke on the reading today, as, as um, Alan read it, that we thank God for their faith. And I want you to see that that simple act of prayer, that simple act of that conversation with God is an act of faith because you're going to the one, you're praying to Jesus, the one who can do something about it. <coughs> we don't pray to stone idols. We don't pray to wood idols. We don't pray to unknown gods. We pray to the living, crucified, ascended Savior. Now, as you think about prayer, and you heard me talk about it this morning at the children's message, just because he hears it, and maybe this is the thing we sometimes forget, just because he hears it does not mean the answer will be what? Well, it does not mean the answer will be yes. And I love the example today that he shared with us. Wish we had McDonald's, he could have McDonald's all the time. As a parent, we know that's not good. You know that's not good. <clears throat> And so the answer is no. And the reality is that there may be all sorts of things that we pray for in this life that we hope for, but for whatever reason that maybe we can't see, but God does, God says no. <coughs> As you pray for whatever your place will be, maybe you have an idea of where you will fit into this vision focus campaign or the vision focus plan. And God might say, no, that's not the place I want you to be. Your role may be different. You may be thinking you have a smaller role. God may be calling you to a larger role. You may think it's a big role, that it's a smaller one. But that's part of the point of prayer, that as we go to God in prayer, it's not so much to find out and tell God what I want to do, but to make ourselves receptive to what it is God wants us to do. <coughs> he wants me to have a scratchy throat this morning. <clears throat> Prayer is that time for us to go to God, and, and, and we certainly come to him with our request. You heard Pastor Chris today in the prayer, just like we do every Sunday. We come with our thanksgiving for all sorts of things, but we come with our requests to bring, for example, comfort to families or to, to make people better. I've prayed for things all my life, 
Lots of things haven't happened that I've prayed for, but I trust God in his wisdom knows those things and knows what's right. And as I continue to do my best to submit to those things and follow him, I trust his answers. You, as you pray for this vision focus plan, are praying that you, God, would show you where it is that you fit in, where it is and how it is that he will use you for this project. Remember, not just the building, but for the entire entirety of it. Think of it this way for a moment, that there have been a whole host of people, generations before us, <clears throat> that have prayed for this church and this community. <clears throat> not that just for the day that they were here, but, but for our day and the days in the future, they prayed for kids and grandkids. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, got to get this water. And you will be praying for those same things, for your own kids, for your own grandkids, maybe your great-grandchildren further down the line, that this place would still <clears throat> continue to serve this community, that others may know that love, that love of Jesus that, that brings you here every week. And that's part of your prayer for Ring the Bell. How will God use you in those ways? Where do you fit in? And notice that, that that in of itself too, just like I said before with praying for whatever it is, that it is an act of faith. You are going to the one who promises to answer. And whether the answer may be yes, the answer may be no, but he will guide you into those things. Now, even with all this, we start talking about the plan and all that stuff, still don't know and we struggle with what to say. And as I thought about this, and I remembered a picture I saw uh, on social media not too long ago, actually it was back in July, and I think this, this honestly sums up sometimes how I feel for prayer, um, and I would suspect many of you too. <coughs> what is that picture telling us? Do, I mean, what's the only two parts that are clear? Dear Jesus and Amen. Do we get lost wondering what to pray? Anybody? We get lost all the time. How many of you have ever been distracted when you're praying? Good, we're getting more arms up. <clears throat> how many of you get frustrated because you get distracted because you think that's not how that's supposed to be? <clears throat> and then how many of you stop because of that? Right, all sorts of us. I love this picture because I think it tells us that it's okay to not to have everything in the right. You don't have to have everything in place there. There's a verse out of Romans that says we don't know what to pray for, but that the Spirit intercedes for us. <clears throat> over and over, our, our prayer life may look just like that. <clears throat> it may be this confused, jumbled mess, but God knows what's on your heart and mind, and he knows what you're saying. And again, the prayer point is... is well, if God knows all that, what is the point to the prayers? It is to get you in line. For you to just have that desire to submit to God's, to what it is God will have you know. So my encouragement is to keep praying. When you have those distractions, for example, <coughs> and the distractions do come all the time, pray for the distractions. So you're praying, you're thinking, oh, today I've got to remember what we're going to do for lunch. Pray, pray that God would... Bless the time that you get to spend with whoever for that meal. Let those distractions be prompts for you in your prayer life. Let, the, let you continue in that way. And then eventually, as those things begin to quiet down, whatever it is that you're ultimately getting to, and today as we think about the, the, the vision focus campaign, you'll return to that. Prayer doesn't have to be hard. That's my encouragement to you today and my point we don't need to be worried that it's a jumbled mess. Jesus knows what's on our hearts and minds. And that's, that's the one thing needful in your prayer. That you turn to the one who listens. That, that, to, that you know that that is a simple act of faith. And that you would continue to turn to him as you look to see your place in this journey that we're on to ring the bell. This journey to, to transform Lee County that he would use you as he fills you with faith so that we may bring his love to others. In Jesus' name, amen.
and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.